All right, guys. Now we're going to start with uh, a really easy concept, but uh, something that students get a lot of trouble with. And basically, it's the concept of pressure in liquids and how we use it to work with barometers and manometers. All right. So first, let's get the concept of pressure first cleared out. So pressure is basically what? Pressure is equal to force by area. So what happens in liquids is, say, um, uh, say this is a pond or a lake or something, all right? I'm trying to draw a pond. Yeah, all right, that's a pond. And like, you know, we draw a fish too. Like, you know, we can, oh my God, that's an ugly fish. We're not keeping that. So uh, say this is a fish. Happy fish. Put an eye and a smiley face. So this is a fish and we have like lots of stuff, seaweed, blah, 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 blah. So we have atmospheric pressure acting on the top of the, s the surface of the lake. So say atmospheric pressure acting here is 100,000 pascal. So you guys know about the, about the pressure of unit of pressure, pascal. That's basically force per meter, sorry, force per area. And that's basically the same as this. And this is expressed as newtons per meter square. So newtons per meter square can be represented as pascal also. They literally mean the same very thing. All right. So here, what happens is uh, you have 100 pascal acting on the surface of the liquid, surface of the pond. And uh, say we take a point here which is, say, what should I say, three meters under the, under the surface. So what happens here is that the pressure due to the atmosphere is acting plus the pressure generated by three meters of water above that point. And it's true for every point along this line because the pressure along this line is also the same. Anywhere you take here or any other point at the same depth, it's going to have the pressure of the atmosphere acting on top of it, 100,000 Pascal, plus the additional uh, pressure due to the three meters, right? So, based on that, um, we can focus on the pressure generated by these three meters. How do we figure that out? So, you take a height of liquid, and we're trying to figure out the pressure generated at the bottom of this. So, we say take this as height H. So, um, even though you're not expected to know this, I'll just say this really short and really concise. Uh, it's basically that the pressure exerted by a liquid is basically the weight of the liquid above that point, which is going to be the force, right? Pressure is equal to force by area. So the force here is basically mg. Weight is mg. And the mass is going to be the density of the liquid rho into basically the height into the cross-sectional area because the area here, basically cross-sectional area, H into A is the volume, and rho into that is basically the mass. When you multiply this with G, basically the M into the G here, you obviously have the weight. So we have the weight, or the force. So we have the weight of the liquid acting here, and here we have the area. So the pressure acting on this area is going to be pressure is equal to force by area. And the force is going to be this, rho into h into a into g divided by the area. So you can cancel the area out, you get rho hg or h rho g or rho g h, whatever you're comfortable saying. So this is the concept of the pressure generated by a liquid. And please remember, the pressure generated is because of the height of the liquid above that point. If you move along the same depth, then the pressure will be the same because you have those three meters of water. And regardless of uh, if even if it's a connected body or not a connected body, by that, say, for example, uh, we have, say, an underground pipe like this, all right? Say there's a, a water pipe, a rain pipe or something, and there's two pipes, and, uh, whoops, hold on just a second, let me fix that. All right, and say there's a pipe underground, and uh, for some reason it's connected like this. So if we have water here at a certain depth, the pressure here, is going to be equal to the pressure here, provided that, yes, this is also open to the atmosphere, blah, blah, blah. And even if it wasn't, because it's at the same depth, it would have the same pressure. We'll get into this in a little more detail when we talk about the manometer. That's one of the devices we have to talk about. But before that, we have to talk about the idea of the barometer. So the barometer is this device which is used to measure atmospheric pressure. All right, 
and how does it do it? Let's talk about that. So uh, I'm pretty sure everyone has tried washing the dishes. Either their parents have told them or they, uh, they felt like they should do it themselves. Uh, very responsible people. So sometimes what you do is, uh, say you have a bucket of water, your sink is full of water, and you have a glass, all right? Say this is a glass, and um, it's all underwater. So we've all done this. We're all guilty of this, so it's all right. Uh, what, sometimes what we do is we just play with the glass by pulling the glass out by its base and not allowing the open end of the glass to get out of the water. What do you see? What do you see happen? Basically, what we do see is that the glass is like this, and all of the water in the glass is full, right? All of this is full of water. So sometimes we see something like this. So when this happens, um, the whole thing is full of liquid, this whole thing is full of liquid, and this, you might think this should be empty, but the reason this is full is because atmospheric pressure is acting on the surface here, and it's pushing the liquid up into the glass. If you don't believe that, imagine, and if you can do it, then great. Imagine trying to wash dishes in space, or even in a vacuum, if you can live through that, which you won't. So, atmospheric pressure is zero here. Say, ima imagine this is in a vacuum, and we take one of those glasses and we put it under water. If we were to lift the glass, basically make it vertical like this, you would still see that the, the liquid is going to be at this height. And why is that? Because there's no atmospheric pressure acting here, so there's none of this. So, there's no reason for the water to be pushed up into the glass to the top of it. And that's why all of the liquid will be at the same depth or the same height, and the pressure acting there is going to be zero pascal. And inside the glass is also a vacuum, and the pressure inside the glass is also zero pascal. So there you go. Now, coming back to Earth, coming back to having an atmosphere, because the atmosphere is pressing, press, sorry, pressing down here, it's pushing the liquid up the pipe or up the glass. So imagine this glass is longer, right? Say, let's, we make the glass so long, not this long, but even longer, so long that the atmosphere's pressure acting downwards pushes the liquid up and up and up, but it won't be able to push it forever. There will be a certain point at height which the pressure now created by this column of liquid, I'm going to give it a different color so that you can really clearly understand what I'm talking about. So, oops, that's not blue. This is going to be blue. So, yeah. So, the pressure due to this column of liquid acting here, right, acting at the base of this, I'll give it another color, the pressure here, pressure of the column of the liquid, say, PCL, I'll just call it PCL, so that's the pressure of the column of the liquid here, which is generated due to this height, is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere acting down at these points. So what does this lead to? The pressure here is always equal to the pressure here. Going back to the fundamental thing that I just said a few minutes ago, the pressure is the same at all depths, and it's universally true. There's no situation where it's not true. So yes, pressure acting here is atmospheric pressure. Say we can call this A0. And the pressure due to the blue column of liquid is PCL. I just gave it a name. doesn't really matter. So this liquid has a height H, right? So pressure due to the column of the liquid is basically H into rho into G. This is the pressure here. So that basically means if the pressure here and the pressure here are equal, if we can measure this value, then we know the pressure of the column of the liquid. And as they're at the same depth as the atmosphere is, we can also say A0 is equal to H rho G. Really simple. So what you eventually get is a very simple way of identifying or measuring atmospheric pressure because it's equal to the height. What you have to be aware of is you have to measure this height properly. And another thing that you have to be aware of is that this area here is an absolute vacuum. So let's give it another color so that you can understand it nicely. The pressure here is P vacuum, right? Just let's give it a PV. Why is that? That's because none of the air could enter this area when the glass was completely underwater and you move the glass up to this point and the water could no longer be pushed further up, that's when the pressure here reached zero. So it started to create a vacuum. If you were to move the glass higher up now, say for example we push the glass up, you would still have the same height. So let's draw a series of diagrams to explain that. Say you have this is the level of the liquid. Say we have a pipe like this, so the height is here, right? So if I tilt this like this, for example, then it would still reach this point. 
if I was to tilt it even further, like this, say, then it would be just this much, something like this. And if I was to move the pipe higher up, doesn't really matter whatever I do, this vertical height would always remain the same. So this is a device that we can use to measure atmospheric pressure. So yes, it doesn't really matter what the orientation is, the height will always remain the same. And interestingly also, it doesn't matter how fat or thin the pipe is. You might have a really fat pipe or a really skinny pipe. So what you would get is they would all give the same height from the surface of the liquid. Why? Because the cross-sectional area has no place in the equation. It's just H rho G. When we did the calculation for finding the equation, uh, H rho G, if we go back to this, you'll see that the area cancels itself out. So because they cancel itself out, the area no, has no effect on the eventual pressure. So the factors which will affect the height is obviously atmospheric pressure, rho, the density of the liquid, and g, which is the acceleration due to gravity. These are the factors which affect it. So now that we've figured out that we can use this equation for finding atmospheric pressure, let's try this. So for example, we don't use water actually in these tubes because, okay, I'll show you why. Atmospheric pressure is approximately around 100,000 kilopascal. So 100,000 pascal or 100 kilopascal. So if this was water, then atmospheric pressure acting here is 100 kilopascal. The pressure here is 0 pascal. So this height, this height can be calculated, that's an H, can be calculated using atmospheric pressure is equal to H rho G. So atmospheric pressure is 100,000 is equal to h, the value we're trying to calculate, into rho, density of water. Density of water, we're going to take it in meter kg per meter cube. Why? Because um, our value, you might think that centimeter meter might work, but our value of acceleration is meters per second square. So that means all of our densities and everything has to be in meters cube. If you were to take gram per cm cube, your acceleration is not in that unit. You will get an inaccurate answer. So h into rho, which is 1000, into g, which is 10. If you do the calculations, H will come in as 10 meters. 10 meters is an astoundingly huge value to have for a glass pipe that you're going to use to measure atmospheric pressure. It's three floors, right? If you like, you know, approximately 30 feet. So what this leads to, zero, that's zero pascal, by the way. What it leads to is a cumbersome and an extremely large device, which is 10 meters tall. So we don't use water. What we do instead is we replace the liquid in the pipe and the barometer, the entire thing, with mercury which has a density of 13,600 kg per meter cube. So it's 13.6 times more dense than water, which means this height of 10 meters, whoops, this height of 10 meters will decrease by a factor of 13.6 times, which means 10 meters becomes uh, 10 divided by 13.6. If we do quick maths, wait, quick, quick maths time, 10 divided by 13.6 is going to be 70, uh, 0 0.735. So say it's 0.74. Make life easy. Uh, 0 0.74 meters. Or you could also say 74 uh, centimeters. Or you can say 740 millimeters. Or you can say, okay, no, no more. So anyway, so that makes it much more easier. That's basically a pipe which is roughly, at most, if you use this pipe, it should be more, no more than one meter tall. So that's why we use mercury in barometers. So what are the factors which affect uh, the, the sensitivity or the devices, how good it is? So the factors which measure, the, which affects the height of the barometer. I'm going to draw this again. This is a barometer and uh, the level of the liquid says it's up here. So this is going to be H. H is always measured from the surface of the liquid here to the surface of the liquid here. So this is H. Pressure here is always zero. Sometimes they call this a partial vacuum. Why? That's because if this is mercury or any other liquid, there might be small amounts of mercury vapor here, which might cause the value of the pressure not to be exactly zero, but a little more than zero. But doesn't really matter. They just love asking these things for like precision and stuff. So H is affected by, not equal, pressure is equal to H rho G, right? So H is affected by the atmospheric pressure is directly proportional. If the atmospheric pressure increases, the pressure increases. H is affected by the density. The more dense the liquid for the same pressure, the less the height, which we just saw with mercury. And obviously, G. It's also inversely proportional to G. The greater the value of G, 
the less the amount of height you're going to get. So this is how we do the maths, and this is how we do the calculations. Cross-sectional area doesn't affect it. Even if the pipe was bent, the height would be always the same. That's why we always take the difference of height from here to here. And yes, that's barometers done. We're going to talk about manometers in another short video right after this. If you have any questions or any queries of how to make this better, please tell me. We'll always try to make them better. And yes, that's that for barometers and the basics of liquid pressure. Moving on, we'll see the next video about manometers. Thank you very much.